Hello everyone, I'm Ola and this is Scouting is for Girls. I hope you had fun learning Python with me so far. If you are here for a first time, make sure to look at my previous video in the correct order to make any sense out of this video. I created a playlist so you can just go there, there is a link in the description below, and watch them in a correct order. Also make sure to visit Django Girls tutorial. I already put all the links to this video out there so you can follow the steps there and look at the videos simultaneously. The link to the Django Girls tutorial is in the description below. Okay, today we will talk about something exciting, loops. What is loop? Similarly to the if statement, it is something that allows us to control flow in programming. In case of if statement, we could decide which line is executed depending on the condition. In case of loop, we will be able to repeat the same steps many, many times for every single element in a given set or until some condition is met. In general, programmers are very lazy and don't like to write the same code many times. There is even a famous dry principle, don't repeat yourself. And thanks to that, you will write something only once and use it whenever possible. So if you need to change it at some point of time, you don't need to go over 400 occurrences and change it for every single place. For example, if we have a list of girls like this, so in variable girls we will have Rachel, Monica, Phoebe and Ola, and we would like to greet them using a function hi we created when talking about functions, we could do that manually, like this. Hi Rachel, hi Monica, hi Phoebe and hi Ola. Then when we save it and run it in console, Python 3 and the name of the file, we would have all of hi and the names printed. However, we could use loop to write it in a more compact way. And thanks to that, it will be very easy to greet four women as well as 400. To define loop in Python, we'll use another keyword. This time it's a keyword for. We will write it as follows. For, then we'll choose name of the variable. Here, simply name. Then we will write keyword in, and after that we will place our list, stored in variable girls. Then there comes colon. As you already know, colon means that we define a block, so next line needs to be indented. Now we will call function hi with name variable as an argument. Let's run it. The result is the same. But what this for in structure really means? It means that for each element in a set or list, in this scenario for each name of the girl, we will assign girl name to the variable name and execute everything in the block. Here, call hi. Let's see it step by step. At the beginning, we assign Rachel to variable name. Now, inside loop body, we use variable name and call function hi with name Rachel. Then the loop finishes and we go back here. At this point, we assign the value Monica to name and we call hi with this. Next, we go back and assign name Phoebe to name and call hi. And finally, we do the same with name Ola. This is what is called flow control. We keep repeating the same lines of code for every single element in the list. Okay, but what happens when we don't have a list? For example, if the variable girls contains number four, not the list. Let's try it. For name in for, colon, print name. Now let's save and check in the console. Python free, python intro.py. We get an error. It says that integer is not iterable. 
Basically, loop expects us to give it something that contains elements, a set, list, dictionary. Number is not like that. It has no inner items. So for loop cannot work with that. Let's try loops with dictionaries then. We'll create one like this. Person with name equals Ola, height 155 centimeters, favorite language Python. And now we will iterate over the dictionary using loop. So we will type for element in person, so the variable name, and then print element. Now let's save it and run in the console. That's interesting. In case of dictionaries, what we have printed is not a pair, key and value, but only a key. How we could access the value then? We could use one of the built-in methods for the dictionaries and access them directly. The method is called values. So we could write for element in percent values print element. Let's save and check in the console. We could also access both key and value at the same time by using the built-in method items on dictionaries. So for element in person items, print element. That looks nice. Okay, this time we got pairs. But we can go one step further and on level of loops we could extract key and value and use it in a nicer way. We will use two variables this time. So we will always assign key names to variable key and value stored in a dictionary in a variable called value. Then we will print person. Now we need to escape special character as we talked about it in my videos about strings. Then we add key. But since we don't know if the key is text or number or anything else, we need to make sure that we convert it into that. We use built-in function str for it. Then we type is. Now it's time to print value. Once again, we use str function to make sure we have text. Now let's save and try to run it in the console. That looks nice. If you wonder what would happen if we remove str around value, we can try it now. Now when we save and run it, we'll have a type error saying that we cannot add a text to a number. Finally, let's look at the very useful Python built-in function called range. It generates a given number of integers. For example, if you would like to have integers from 1 to 10 instead of writing them by hand like this for number in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 we could write for number in the range 1, 11 so basically anything between 1 and 10 we would print a number. Now we can save and run it in the console and see numbers printed from 1 to 10. Oh wow, that was intense. Make sure to experiment a little bit more with loops in Python. Also visit this link to the Python documentation. I will put this link in the description below. And next time we will make something fancy. We will make it possible to read values provided in the console to your program. So you, as a user, will be able to pass some values to your program and then operate over it. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn how to program with me, make sure to subscribe this channel and stay tuned. Have a nice day and see you!